five solar panels go in, but only one will come out to be the winner. Now I bought all of these solar panels myself so I could find the best solar panel for the money, just like if you guys are looking for one for a certain project. And when it comes to 200 watt solar panels, they are really kind of a niche item because they are very popular in the van and RV market just due to the size. When placing these on RVs, they fit really well when it comes to being on each side of your AC unit. So the 200s and the 250s are usually some of the most popular ones that go on top of most common RVs. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a good idea what could be a good solar panel for you. And if you were curious about the RV solar build with the new racking and also these new brackets where I can swap out any panel at will, well then make sure you're subscribed and you ring that bell for the future videos coming out soon. Let's meet our contestants. First up is this 200 watt solar panel from RV Powser. It's using an 18 bus bar technology with new end type cells saying that it's 25% efficient. It has a waterproof IP68 junction box, MC4 connectors, and will have a 2.5 millimeter wire. This solar panel has an open circuit voltage at 22.1 volts with a maximum power current of 10.9 amps. The RV Pelzer will come in at 19.4 pounds. Next up is this new EcoWorthy 200 watt panel. This brand new panel comes with a new bus bar free design. It says its high efficiency solar cells are 25.2% efficient. It does say IP68 rated, but the junction box is only rated at IP67. It'll come with MC4 connectors. It'll come with a four millimeter wire, which is larger than the RV Pauser. This solar panel is rated at 200 watts with an open circuit voltage at 21.6 volts with a maximum power current at 10.59 amps. This solar panel will come in at about 20.8 pounds. Next up is this CalSun solar panel using half cut cells with 16 bus bars. CalSun's 200 watt solar panel uses N type cells and says it has 25% high efficiency providing higher performance output. The CalSun is also a bifacial solar panel providing up to a total of 30% output while providing a max current of 8.43 amps with an open circuit voltage of 27.31 volts. With the CalSun being bifacial, it'll have two junction boxes, both which are IP68 rated. It'll also come with MC4 connectors. It'll also use a four millimeter wire. The CalSun solar panel will weigh about 23.6 pounds. Next up is this Renogy Shadowflex solar panel, which has been very popular using 16 bus bars and also utilizing new N-type cells. They claim more power output due to shade performance with 25% efficiency using new N-type silicone wafers. When looking at the specs, it says IP67 rated. They are also using MC4 connectors. They are also using 2.5 millimeter wire. This 200 watt solar panel has an open circuit voltage at 36.5 volts and a maximum operating current at 6.3 amps. The Renogy Shadowflex weighs approximately 23.7 pounds. Last up is this Bouge RV solar panel, which is also using half cut cells and 16 bus bars. The Bouge RV says it's using top con cells that are N type for world leading performance. The Bouge RV is also a bifacial solar panel. It will also use two junction boxes that are both IP68 rated. It will come with MC4 connectors and use a 2.5 millimeter wire. When it comes to specs, there is no sticker on the back of the solar panel to indicate what the voltage or the output is. As we take a look online, our open circuit voltage is 36.4 volts with a maximum of 6.3 amps. The Bouge RV solar panel will come in at just about 22.9 pounds. If we take a look at pricing at the time of this video, the RV Pauser is the cheapest solar panel at $149 while the CalSun Bifacial comes in $159, $179 for the Bouge RV Bifacial, $199 for the EcoWorthy, and $205 for the Renogy Shadow Flux, again at the time of this video. We'll now measure the square area of each solar panel. If size is a big factor, then the EcoWorthy is definitely the smallest in size, with the RV Pauser just slightly larger, while the Renogy, Bouge RV, and CalSun are relatively close in size. The first two solar panels will be the EcoWorthy and the RV Pauser. Each one will have the same amount of time between six and seven hours to produce the most amount of energy. The test will start when each solar panel is in the sun and the shade hits the first panel. We will track each solar panel's production with these solar charge controllers and also these batteries. The conditions for the next few days will be extremely hot but clear skies with a slight haze. 
and the test is started between the RV Pauser and the EcoWorthy. Renogy number one and Victron number one will be the RV Pauser. And as we take a look at Victron number one, again, the RV Pauser was 72 watts, with the EcoWorthy producing about 53 in the early sunlight. As we head to the hottest point of the day, we take a look at solar panel temperatures. As we look at the EcoWorthy having a higher temp of 145 degrees versus the 138 degrees of the RV Pauser. Temperature can have a large effect on overall output. As we look at the temperature just in the shade, we are almost at 100 degrees. After this test concluded, you could see that the RV Pauser brought the battery percentage up to 50% from the starting percentage of 5. As we also take a look at our overall watt hour production, the RV Pauser brought in 660 watt hours versus the 450 watt hours of the EcoWorthy. As we take a look at this graph, you can see how our wattage started to climb until it reached the peak of the day. You could see a max of 137 for our max output for this solar panel. Compared to the EcoWorthy, you can see how it starts to go up to around 94 to 95 and even 96 watts at a peak, but never breaking 100, which is actually not impressive for a 200 watt panel. As we move to the next two solar panels, we will be doing the bifacials next. As most RVs do have a white roof, and after previous testing, I have found that even just by having a white back sheet and the panels on the ground, I am able to produce a few extra watts per solar panel. All solar panels were also cleaned before each test began. And we're off as both tests begin. As we take a look at Renogy number one, that will be our CalSun solar panel with an early lead, producing 97 watts, again with CalSun on number one and Bouge RV on number two. As we take a look at the Bouge RV solar panel at 157 degrees, and we move over to the other bifacial, the CalSun, pretty much being the same as these builds are very similar as far as design. And even under these hotter temperatures, both solar panels actually performed very well. After this test concluded, we can take a look at our battery percentages with the CalSun having a higher overall percentage gain. As we take a look at this graph, the CalSun solar panel ended up having a max of 170 watt output during the peak of the day. As we take a look at the Bouge RV solar panel, you can see as it tries to peak out, it really just doesn't break much more than about 141 is its peak wattage for the day. And as we look at the total amount of watt hours produced, the CalSun did very well at 760 watt hours, beating out the other three solar panels even under harsher conditions. That means the next test is going to be the Renogy against the CalSun, which the Renogy will have to bring its A game considering a slight advantage for the bifacial solar panel. And now as I plug in both solar panels, I am actually going to give them two days to be able to produce the most amount of energy considering I do have some high clouds that will be going over. So this will help each one get a little bit of an advantage with cloud effect and not to mention shady conditions. With high clouds in the sky, this is going to bring our temperatures down so we should see higher outputs. Now I did want to do a series of shade testing since the Renogy Shadow Flux specializes in shade according to the manufacturer. As we take a look here, Victron number one being the CalSun definitely lags behind the Victron number two, which is the Renogy. But as soon as the shade does start to hit the last little sliver of the CalSun, this is where it now starts to exceed the output of the Renogy Shadow Flux. As we continue shade testing, I've marked each one of the solar charge controllers to make this easier to read and follow along. Now the CalSun is basically a double solar panel. It is a 100 watt solar panel with another 100 watt solar panel connected in the middle. So you will see a bigger drop off in the beginning. But as we continue to move the shade up the solar panels, you'll actually see where it will start to produce more energy as the Renogy Shadow Flux starts to suffer even more once we get to about a third shaded. And as we fast forward just a little bit, you can see we've pretty much covered half of the Renogy Shadow Flux to where now it is not putting out much of any power. As we start to encroach on the second half of the CalSun solar panel, this is where you will now see it start to drop off quite a bit. And as we go up a little bit farther, you can see that our wattage just drops even more to where now our output is negligible. For the average van and RV builder, a lot of times shade does become a problem due to the AC units as you can see here in this example. So this is why shade testing sometimes gives you a better idea on which might be a better panel. As we continue one more shade test, again I'm just going to shade half of the solar cells. And as you can see here, the shadow flux has already dropped quite a bit. And as I continue on to the CalSun solar panel, in this configuration, the CalSun is doing better. 
But as I continue up to the cow sun now, you can see that we're pretty much the same, even though I'm only shading a little bit of the shadow flux. So as I continue up halfway onto the cow sun solar panel, this is where it's pretty much died off. But when we look at the shadow flux solar panel, it actually does a little bit better when it comes to shading at least in this configuration. Overall, this will really depend on how you plan to use your solar panels on which one might be better. Now, as we take a look at the watt hours gain per day, the CalSun solar panel definitely did better each day. And this would definitely be different if you had two solar panels, four solar panels, and you timed this by one week, two months, six months, and more, your energy production would be that much more ahead of the Renogy Shadow Flux. Now, one more thing to look at is customer service and also warranty, as I know people ask me this all the time. Now, one thing with looking at the CalSun website, there is not really much when it comes to information. When taking a look at frequently asked questions or any other type of descriptions, there's not really anything to be had as it pretty much brings up nothing. When you look at privacy policy, terms of service, there really isn't anything except an email which also says subscribe to our newsletter. It looks like there's not much for warranty information or product support whatsoever, no matter where I look on this website. The only thing there is, is this contact email, which you could then submit maybe for a replacement or some kind of warranty information. When looking at the Renogy website, you can see that it looks like it's more put together and obviously has tons of products and is a well-known name. They've been around for years. And when you look at warranty information, contact services, they even have a phone number that you can call. They also have this warranty tab if you want in-depth information about batteries, solar panels, and more. So it just seems like that they might have a little bit more product support versus CalSun really doesn't seem to have any. When it comes to performance, the CalSun did excellent, beating out all the other competitors. But due to lack of customer support and any kind of warranty information, do you go with the known brand, Renogy, which does have customer support and warranty information right on the website, or do you go with the best performing panel? You guys are gonna have to let me know. And if you have any other suggestions for tests, let me know as I get a lot of ideas from you guys. I hope you guys liked the video and I hope to see another one.